So today I'm going to talk about uh, the RISC-V verification. And my name is Tao, I'm from Google. So uh, this is uh, our work related to a UVM-based RISC-V processor verification platform. So uh, first agenda, so I will start with motivation. Why are we building this flow? Followed by our view, what makes a good instruction generator? Then I would give more detail on the random instruction generator flow, and followed by how the cost simulation flow works. And uh, then I will talk about the benchmark, how the how our solution works, and also the, about the future work. So I think most people here will agree that verification is actually one of the key challenge to processor success, right? So we have a lot of open source hardware, and, but we don't have many kind of efforts spending on the verification side. Not only the solution, when we are talking about verification, we have less audience. So thanks for staying here to hear about verification, and I think your interest will pay off. So in the open source world, there's a major two solutions for the risk uh, verification. So one is the risk five tests, which is a assembly unit test library, which is actually a good starting point for you to test some basic stuff. Each instruction is cute well, this kind of thing. But you cannot use it to sign off your verification because the test is too simple. And on the other hand, the torture test is a Scala-based random risk five instruction generator which support a lot of random instruction extensions. So, which make it kind of attractive, but from our view, uh, the program generated by the torture test is actually pretty simple. So it doesn't have a complex branch structures, it doesn't have a random privilege mode setup, and the place table is pretty, pretty much fixed. So there's a lot of things that are not randomizing the flow. And the other big stuff is that uh, it's a Scala based. Well, Scala is a very powerful language, but for the DV engineer, like me, it's actually a language barrier to understand how it works and make a contribution and improve it. So this is actually a language barrier for DV person. So as I mentioned in the previous slide, is that a lot of missing pieces in our current solution. So our motivation is to build a high quality open DV infrastructure that, that can be adopted and enhanced by the DV engineer and uh, to improve your quality of uh, processor verification. So before I jump into the details of our flow, I want to give some background. Maybe everybody knows this, but I just give some quick background about system, system wear lock and UVM. So system wear lock is a dominant language in the verification world. So it provides some awesome language feature like constraint random, coverage models, make, make, makes you writing such instruction generator much easier. And you don't need to deal with the constraint solver by yourself. On the other hand, the UVM is the kind of most prevailing verification infrastructure building on top of System wear lock. If you are a DV engineer, when you hear about system wear lock and UVM, it should be very familiar to you. So let's kind of come back to our motivation. We want to build something that can be understood by DV engineer very easily and make enhancement on top of it. So, okay, let's start with what we think a good random instruction generator should have. So the first one, the most basic one, is randomness. So you can run, randomize a lot of things as defined in the spec and in the implementation. So I'll talk more in the following slides. The second one is architectural well instruction generator, meaning that you're not just randomly generating some stuff. So you need to design for your architectural features. Then the third one is performance, which means your instruction generator should be high performance to generate a very large program in a very short time. And it also need to be kind of extendable and configurable so you can extend to your own instruction extensions or adding new sequences. So let me first talk about randomness. So when we are talking about randomness, it's actually multi-level randomization we are talking about. At the bottom level is instruction level randomization, which you need to randomize each instruction to hit all the corner cases, exceptions, this kind of thing. So it's pretty straightforward. So, but when you move one level above, it's we call it sequence level randomization, which is to maximize the combination of the ordering of the instructions. Some of them is straightforward, you just random them, random them one after another, but some of them you need to de design for it. So like you have branch instruction, you want to branch to different type of instructions, or you have a bunch of back and back and forth no store instruction, you want to have a fence in the middle. So these are all the cases that we want to randomize in our flow. Then you move one level above, at the top level is program level randomization, which has, you have a privilege mode setup, you have a, a lot of privilege mode CSRs, you have a page tables, you might have a, a large number of programs you want to randomize and you want to jump between them. So that we call program level randomization. So let me start with instruction randomization. So on the left side, it's actually the easy part. 
you might have arithmetic, shipped, logical, whatever comparing instructions, which is pretty simple. You just randomize them one after another individually, hit all the corner cases, that's it. So the tricky part, a little bit of tricky part is on the right. You may have a branch and jump instruction. For the branch and jump, you need to have a valid target. You need to branch to, you jump to, and you want to do it carefully to avoid this kind of infinite loops. And for the no slow instruction, you need additional instruction to give you a valid base address. Make sure you're not you're noting from some valid point. And for the CSR instruction, you don't want to randomly random them to change your architectural state to something you unwanted. You want to control them in some way. So and uh, give a little bit more introduction about the no slow instruction. So as I mentioned earlier, no no slow instruction need one additional instruction to set up the base address. It's pretty pretty straightforward. You know the base address and you do the node store. But we don't want just do it. We want to randomize them, meaning that we will then look at the great part. There, there are some in relevant instruction we kind of add in the middle between these two instructions. So the reason for doing that is that we want to run, like I said earlier, it's kind of trying to maximize, maximize the ordering of instruction. We don't want these two things keep always come back to back. We want some other combinations. So there are other examples like jump, step operation, and loop structure, also kind of this kind of thing. We call this kind of a instructions like atomic instruction stream. I will kind of explain why we call that atomic instruction stream in the next slide. So the reason we call that atomic instruction is that you don't want to branch in the middle of them, meaning that you want to set up the base and you do the node and store. You don't want to branch into it and skip your, uh, your base instruction. So that's why when we're doing our branch kind of a target assignment, we're taking into account this kind of thing, make sure we're not stepping into the, in the middle of the atomic instructions. So on the right side, we also explain how we do backward branch, which is typically a uh, loop structures. So we, we have some like dedicated instruction stream to handle this. So we're talking about uh, instruction randomization. Now it's now you have another instructions. Now you have another programs. So you have you might have not not number of programs you generate. You want to use the jump instruction to go back and forth. So when you are doing this on the left side, you you want to avoid the case that you do some loop function calls. Make sure going to the deadlock. So that's why we kind of uh, designed a tree-based structure. So after you randomize each program, you annotate each, randomly annotate the call stack level for each programs. Then you shuffle them and generate the call stack. So this, at the end of the, the randomization, we kind of shuffle them around the code sections. When you really execute these instructions, it's going to jump between different instruction pages back and forth, which is good enough to verify your maybe instruction TLB or instruction caches. So here's another example of what we do about the page table randomization. So this five support multi-level page tables. You can have many, many different type of, type of exceptions in the page tables. You can have deep, deep uh, page table entries or link page table entries at any level. If you appear at the bottom level, that means it's an exception. There are many other exception cases in the system. So when we are generating this thing, we are not only generating valid stuff. We are also generating a lot of invented stuff. Make sure your processor can actually handle it, go to the trap, and resume the execution from there. Actually, it's a qu quite a challenge for the processor to do this kind of a behavior. OK, I talked a lot about the randomization. Now I, I will switch to the architectural world part. So for the advanced processors, you might have a lot of things which not just randomization. So you might have branch prediction which you leverage the previous branch history to, to predict what the next pr prediction result. So in order to fully verify this kind of uh, design, you need, to, you need to have a good combination of forward branches, backward branches, the same branch have different result or same result, kind of back and forth to hit all the kind of combination for the, for the branch prediction unit. And uh, you might have the uh, MMU, which have the instruction TLB, data TLB, the caches. So, to verify those things, like the instruction TLB, you want your program to be jump between different code pages back and forth very fast. So that you need to build in something to make it happen. And on the data page side, you want to have your node store kind of quickly go through a large number of data pages back and forth, so you hit the case of the TLB replacement. Uh, replacement. On the other side, you might want to, okay, th this sequence only access the same cache line back and forth, back and forth. This is also kind of an interesting scenario. You need to understand what architecture feature that your processor has, then you design your instruction generator uh, to verify them. 
So this is the, the final example about architecture well. So you may have uh, different hazard conditions, which will cause trouble to your issue commit or execute stage. So you might also have the exception in the middle, which means you need to clean up your pipeline, reset the execute engine, these kind of things. So we design all this to, to, to base on the architecture features to design our instruction generator. At the end, it's not just a random, a binary generated random instruction stream. It's generated in purpose to verify something. So this is our flow. So uh, the stuff I'm generating in the program header, then we set up the privilege mode, whether you are user mode, machine mode, supervisor mode, we randomize that. Then we randomize the page tables. You can have a multi-level page tables, and you have a different number of page table entries. Then we do the init, do the init then we generate all the sub-programs. Then we assign the branch targets, meaning that we, we have another branch instruction already generated. We, we need to assign a valid branch target for them. Then after that, I mentioned that we need to also do the direct instructions, which we think is very important because uh, not everything will happen at random name. You need to be able to mix your direct thing and random thing together to, to have a good quality of a stimulus. Then after we get all the instructions ready, we generate the call stack, then the test completion, and also we, we support all type of interrupt handling, trap handling, this kind of thing also generate at the end of the program. After that, we really generate the page table entries and put in the memory, and also at the end will be the data and uh, stack section. So uh, this is the memory map of our program. It's actually a very complete program. It has the instruction section, page table section, data section, and stack section. It may, it may not be a real like, operating system where you're going this way, but we try, kind, try to design a kind of simplified version to uh, kind of solve our verification purpose. OK, uh, this is the call simulation flow. I think there's no magic here. It's just a very standard flow. At the left side, you have a real random instruction generator. The output is a complete RISC V assembly program. Then you pass to the compiler to generate the binary. The binary then pass to the audio simulation and also your IS simulation. And those simulations will generate the trace log. And we can compare the trace log at the end of the simulation. It's pretty standard. If you just use this for, if you already have your test bench do this kind of cost simulation, you can only use the random, random instruction generator part to generate the program for you. The rest of the thing will be unchanged. It's pretty no integration effort. OK, um, this is the feature list as of today. So we support 32-bit uh, uh, integer multiply compressor instruction as well as the 64-bit version. And we support all the privilege mode, user mode, supervisor mode, machine mode, and we also support page tables, address translation, this kind of thing. And for the spec, uh, we, we designed based on the user level spec 2.20 and the privilege spec 1.10. And uh, we verify this uh, flow with the uh, kind of EDA simulators. We see as incisive. So we actually do a lot of kind of deep optimization on the performance, make sure it can randomize very fast. So uh, with, uh, uh, apart from these features, we also have a test suite, which include all the things I just mentioned earlier, like all the type of uh, test we designed. So uh, here's the benchmark. So we have our flow ready, and now we need to know what the performance looks like. So we actually take three cores to do the benchmark. Uh, first, the Pino Risky core is a four stages 32 bit core with DSP extension. Then, the Ariane core, which is a six stages uh, 64 bit core uh, with all the privilege levels, you can actually boot a Unix like system. And also, another core like Marin core, uh, 32 bit core. So, and we use Spike as our IS simulator to give our reference output. So, here I want to thank for all the designers to support us to the evaluation. I think the evaluation won't be possible without your help. So. Also, I think it's kind of the beauty of the open source collaboration because we actually found a lot of valuable bugs uh, before they were taped out. And in the meantime, the core itself is actually more mature than our flow at the beginning because we start everything from scratch. It also helped us to improve our flow. OK, this page talk about the bugs. So we just, I just need some categories, what kind of bug we found in the system. Before we uh, kind of take those course, all this course has been so some level of uh, verification, including the RISC-V test, torture test, or even can boot a system, operating system successfully. So we take that call and start applying our flow. So the first type of bug is some cache racing bug. You access in one cache line back and forth. We find very deep bugs in this category. The second type is actually a big category that the RISC-V defined a 
many privileged CSRs at different privilege levels, and some CSR is the shadow, shadow register of the different other CSRs. So you have access control of each individual field. Some field you can access, some field you cannot access. So we find a lot of bugs in RTO and also in Spike. We also find a Spike bug that you cannot uh, do this correctly. So the other things like fence operation failures, that you have a multiple execution engine, you have a fence happening, you need to flush your pipeline. Some, somehow, maybe you forget to reset some execution unit, or you, you, your, your flushing kind of fails. And also, on the, uh, the first one is the page table, like page four handling. As I mentioned earlier, we inject a lot of error at a different level of page tables. And the design, the design will easily go wrong because of this. Maybe you cannot detect the error, cannot resume from execution. And also there are some other bugs like uh, incorrect branch execution, which need very, very specific combination of instructions to happen to trigger this bug. And also very corner case uh, AOU bugs. So uh, I think I have talked a lot. And uh, I think it's just a starting point. I think verification for the processor is never a simple task. We haven't talked about performance verification. We haven't talked about security verification. And we want to have a coverage model to help us know that, OK, this is standard and how well we have done our verification. So that's why I go back to our motivation. We want to make it like open. So we are going to open source this platform. So the uh, expect date, release date, will be January 2019. So there's a Google group. So you can sign off this group to get the notice. So we hope to hear, you, hear your feedback and your advice on overflow.